To see a friend who will be traveling to Dubai tomorrow. So I want her to get me some things. I need to go and give her some money. Okay, ma'am. You can check the bag I performed work yesterday. Uh, you can take some cash in my needs. Right. Don't, don't be discreet about that. Thank you. Okay, let me push down. Okay, ma'am. Don't use the car. No, thank you. You just down the road. Okay, ma'am. Go go. All right.
as my love. I wish I could get more of this. John. Yes, my love. I'm thinking. About what? Killing Joseph. What did you just say? Are you out of your mind? I love you so much. I can keep for you. Betty, the sound in your voice, I don't like it. Don't do anything stupid. It's your horse bark for crying out loud. I'm dead serious. I'm leaving. I'm leaving now. When you come to your senses, we will talk. John, that's the only way we can be together. I want to be with you forever. I'm leaving. Hmm? John.
Come. John! What? John, please come! Come! Okay, 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 okay. Let's see. Now? Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. Um, just. <laughs> the friend of mine. Just think of the house. I'm coming. I'm not going to stay in the house. You know? He means pushing outside. Let me just continue. What's happening? Nothing, nothing. Just. I'm coming. Good day viewers and you are welcome to today's edition of The Sea Shots. And today we will be discussing about the story of Mrs. Betty Luke and her demised husband, Mr. Joel Luke. And the story is titled Dead End. And to discuss this episode with me, I have with me uh, just by my left here, I have Mrs. Justina Kess Albosa, the founder and life coach of Joseph Place, Nigeria Limited in Worry. You are welcome, ma'am. Well, thank you. Good day, viewers. And to my far left, I have Reverend Ubioworo. Uh, he is the National Presbyter of the Church of God Mission, Ubeji Province in Delta State. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. And I am your host for today, and my name is Akimbola Fraze. You are welcome. Um, the story we are talking about today is something that seems to be common when you have people that are married and sometimes they still have affairs with maybe young guys or young girls. And here we see this lady, Mrs. Betty by name, having an affair with a younger guy whose name is John. And what comes to mind first is why do we have these kind of occurrences in the society, especially something like next door neighbors? Sir, what could prompt a young man who who is about to get married to be involved with a man that is uh, with, an, with a woman that is married? Well, it's simply true that people no more have value for life. The valuelessness of life shows that. The taste, the desire, men want to be pleaser of themselves. So when something happens, when people don't, they don't have value, they don't have respect, they don't have standards, anything goes. There's no boundary. I mean, it's nauseating. Okay, sir. Well, I'd like to ask one question. Yeah. For such, uh, uh, just as there's a portion of the Bible that says, "Can two work together except they are in agreement?" Uh, that means that uh, they came in contact somehow. It's either the guy came to the woman, or the woman went. To the guy somehow okay but in this kind of situation if a woman who is married is making advances to a young guy what's the guy supposed to do 
They gave me up to the buffet and said, look, no, stop it. You are married. Marriage is man and the wife, not a man and one quarter woman. <laughs> the, the, the young man should have put an end to it. And if the other way around, the lady should have put an end to it. But it's like they were all square pets in a square hole, so to speak. Okay. Um, Mrs. Uh, Justina, um, in this event, as it has occurred, it has resulted to the loss of a life of a man, maybe with a promising career or a good family. Uh, I believe such an occurrence is going to get to the knowledge of the police. Who is supposed to take this matter to the police? Should the young girl, um, Cynthia, that discovered, should she just go ahead and report to the police that this is what she has observed, or she should allow her fiancé, John, to do that? Or do they have to allow the family to come in first? Or what, what can they do? Thank you. The matter here is um, quite complicated. Emotions are frayed at this point, and good judgment is far. They need to take time to, it will take a while for them to understand and allow to settle in themselves what has just happened. Because right now, they are just faced with a situation that is um, you know, beyond their, their comprehension. First of all, the fiancé, Cynthia, is angry. She is the aggrieved person in this matter. At least the aggrieved one that is alive. The boy she's about to marry, get married to in one month has disappointed her to the point of being an accomplice to, to murder, accomplice in quotes, because she, he didn't give his permission. But he had some knowledge of it and he would have been able to maybe dissuade or do something more than he did, just getting up and just walking out of the, the, the scene. The boy is confused because he did not know that the woman would go that far. The woman herself, even in her selfish imagination, has seen that the boy is not, John is not behind all of this. So she too is confused. So they will have to get themselves together first to know what to do, whether to involve the police, because everybody here is trying to protect somebody. And especially in this country, you know when you bring police into issues, people are afraid of who will the police put behind bars first? Who will the police listen to? What will they do? So they have, you have to take into consideration all of that before you, they, you think of what to do. But let us give a, a, a scenario here that everybody wants to protect themselves and they say, okay, let the family come and discover. We are also in a situation in a country where post-mortem is not the norm. I have had an issue with an auntie dying and we wanted to do a post-mortem. And, um, you know, to even to get somebody to do the post-mortem was a problem because we had only one specialist and the person was in UCH and they had to now look for and by the time we came to what to do and all of that the family had said what this girl she, she just died we don't have to pieces off her body you know the way we are with our customs and culture yes, yes. so in that case before the pathologist will come and even make up his mind before we can fix a date and all that the family had said okay rather than yes yeah, this is what we want let's let, 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 just let it go even when we knew that there was something funny about yeah. the way the, the, yeah. the lady died so in, in this our culture and setting, it will take a lot of, we, we, there's no concrete way that we are saying that this thing is going to be handled right away. But we think that if in most cases they will allow the family to come in. Okay. Because they know that at the end of the day, they will be able to either settle out of court without the family knowing exactly what happened. And if it's the family that insists on post-mortem, then it will be legal battle. Okay. I would like to ask one question. If the lady that is betrothed to uh, the accomplice in court, uh, whose name is Cynthia, were to be maybe your daughter or your younger sister or something, how would you uh, advise her to proceed in this situation? Should she wait to see whatsoever the outcome will be and still proceed with that relationship? Or is that a signal that this relationship is not working out now, it's not the right one? As far as I'm concerned, there's no, no relationship. There's no relationship? There's no relationship. It's because just about the one to the There's no relationship. You see, a lot of people make mistakes. They deny, they, they live in denial. They know that there's no, the, the relationship is not existing. But they're just hanging on to some shadow. It is obvious from the way John is behaving that he's not ready to get married and settle down. 
he is old enough to make decisions and to you know face the consequences of his decisions. And you know, a lot of ladies, sorry to say, are, are very foolish when it comes to things like this. You know, we just tag along and say, ah, what will people say? After, and then we just cover, maybe by the time we marry, we will change. And you start covering what cannot be covered. It's like balloon that you're trying to put on that water and the thing just keeps coming up again. You understand? So, I, there, as far as I'm concerned, there's no cancer to a relationship. It, it, it's non-existent. So, as far, in, in fact, <laughs> It is gone, the relationship. Okay. Okay. Whatever yeah. you held on to as a relationship is gone. There was no one. There was no one. I mean, it was a pseudo relationship. Yes, that is it. Pseudo relationship. Okay. okay. Well, the Bible told her what, no, no, when, when he was caught. So it's just a friend. Just a friend. So you can see how unfaithful, how unreliable, nauseated that boy was. So okay. there was nothing there. It's better to build a relationship than to go for a divorce. Okay. I agree with that also. But uh, one other thing is this uh, that I would like to ask. Um, I don't believe or I don't think that John actually thought it was going to get this bad. A lot of young guys are there who they do two timing. They just they just maintain this on a spare, but this is the main one they want to go for. So John is likely to be like that. He really wants to marry Cynthia. I don't think he wants to marry an old woman somewhere. He wants to marry Cynthia, he wants to go with her, but perhaps maybe uh, Mrs. Betty has some money or some things he's getting. He wants to use for his wedding or whatever. And it has happened this way. I don't think he planned it. He, he, was, not even, he was not even agreeing to eat when the woman mentioned it the first time. Is this not possible that, uh, is it not possible that John could have woken up now suddenly to discover how wrong he was and then correct himself and be able to move on with his own uh, marriage plans? But remember that he has a case to he has a case to answer. To answer yes. yes. So has he got to got out of that one? Even if he does, he that once comes to most justice must come to a good reclaims. His his figures already stained. He was aware. He didn't know about it. He took it for granted. Yeah. He was selfish for it. So he should be able to pay for it and get a Okay, so should we should okay. if yeah. if even if then if nobody died and his hands were clean, okay. he must, he's not the kind, he's an irresponsible, unsettled fellow okay. that should not get into any marriage at all. And you see, it is because of this, and why this kind of people to say, okay, he might change, that we have the cases of divorces that we have today, and the marital abuses that we have today. Because this person has shown to you that he's an unreliable person. Okay. And the person is going to continue in that vulnerability. And when you try to do something to counter what he's doing, he becomes he will become abusive. Okay. We can avoid all these abusive marriages and early divorces by making up our minds when we discover that this is not he didn't do it once. Yes. He went the extra mile to do it with somebody else's wife. I, I don't think it's it, it, I don't think there's anything to build on from there. There's no foundation. Well, that that house is going to come. Any which way. Okay, I agree with that. Um, what of a situation if uh, the with this occurrence, the, the way it has been, what of a situation where maybe the guy walks up to church and makes some changes about himself, perhaps gives his life to Christ, can he still be able to proceed with the woman? Or if Cynthia were to be maybe your younger one or your daughter or something and then walks up to you and say, say that, okay, he has repented, he's gone to church, he has given his life to Christ and, uh, okay, we'll just allow you a case or whatever to go on, I will wait for him. Is that a good line of thought for Cynthia? Well, if Cynthia wants to take a risk, I don't think it's worth it. The truth is that the foundation has been very, very bad. In fact, there was no foundation. There's no foundation. There was no reliable, dependable foundation. So the earlier she withdrew, the better. Okay. Now let's go straight to John. For John now, who did not give consent to mother, but is now is an accomplice to mother. What can he do to save himself in this situation? Should he will will he serve him? Will it serve him better if he is the one that goes to the police station to report the case first, or? Should he just try to cover his head, saying this is where he did it? When you say accomplice to mother, it does not mean that 
two people who have to sign agreement. Okay. Their action has led to a murder. Okay. I'm not a legal person, but to a large extent, he can be introduced as an accomplice because they will say he has a motive. What is anybody can storm out of something and say, I, I don't want, I don't want to. Because the, the woman told him and he didn't do anything about it. He thought storming out in his foolishness and solve the problem. The girl, the fiance, spoke with him concerning the matter. Okay. He did not do anything about it. He has been going out with this woman and he knows that women like this can do what they say they will do, just to prove a point. Yeah. He knows how the woman has treated her husband thus far. Okay. So all of that coming to court, I'm sure he will have a good case. Okay. Now, if you were to be maybe uh, part of the family of uh, Mr. John, uh, and you get to know of this event occurring like this, what will you do? Will you insist if they are asking for forgiveness and all that, will you let it be or will you allow the law to run its course? No, he should, he should, pay, he should pay for his debt. He should suffer it and at the end he will ask for forgiveness. He can't, he can't escape. Nature will not let my life escape. Okay. Okay. That's it, uh, viewers, uh, for today. We're, we've been discussing with uh, Mrs. Uh, Justina Kesabusa, uh, who is the founder and life coach of Joseph Place Nigeria Limited in Wari, and also with uh, Reverend Ubioworo, the National Presbyter of uh, Church of God Mission, the province in Delta State, and we've been discussing about dead end. Thank you for coming to uh, discuss this matter with us today. For anyone out there who is in a situation uh, like Cynthia, you'll find out now, as we have said, that there was no relationship, no foundation from the beginning. And uh, perhaps you may want to take a risk to wait, but I think the best thing is to allow the law to take its course. And uh, let's see what comes out of that. So thank you very much for coming today. And we want you to make it a time with us next time on decisions. Thank you. Bye-bye.